And who's in the audience? Who's in the audience? Jeffrey Kahn, Ray Bourgeois, John Spector, Beth Finlayson, Christian Rivard from The Standard, and Mika Seely from the Economic Development Commission. And the other four select board, the other three select board members are here. Butch is still away. And Phil is present. Beth is here and Macy is filming. Thank you. A B A R D. A B A R D. Okay. Six o'clock. I don't think I've ever put your actual. Gonna call the meeting to order. We all ready? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> John, I'm calling the meeting to order now. Okay. Um, first item that we have is additions to and deletions from the posted agenda. Storm damage related to yesterday's rain incidents, um, a resignation from the select board, Sonia, Prince and Pauper liquor license, wastewater treatment facility roof and alter roof replacement and alterations. Um, the next item is actually in the basic agenda that went out and it's a sewer increase on Happy Valley Road in Taftsville. So we're eliminating that from the additions too because we already have it on the regular agenda. Um, all access proposal for email migration to Office 365. Structural engineer summary of the town hall study and the financial report for the select board. A motion to accept these additions to the posted agenda. I would make the motion to accept these additions. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second it. Thank you. John and Jill both seconded. Uh -huh. um, all those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? <clears throat> okay. It's unanimous, so we don't. Pardon? Uh, so there, were, there was one other addition that I had sent uh, a memo to Beth and Phil, but I didn't send it to anyone else. I didn't have anyone's email address, which is a consideration of a second grant from the EDC. You're considering the park run grant. Um, I think just be, I didn't put it in there because it's under, those were just highlights of the EDC. You guys can add into your. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> so the EDC is going to talk to us about two grants tonight. Correct. Do you hear that, Jill? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And um, so, Phil, would you like to address the storm damage first? You know yeah. what happened yesterday in the area, Jill. No. Severe rain. A lot Severe of melting, rain. a lot of roads washed out. I think the new storm drain system on North Street worked very, very well. Otherwise, that might have washed out too. By 8 o'clock last night, everybody was able to drive home to their house, whether on their normal road or by taking a detour. But nobody was stranded from sleeping at home. It will, in my opinion, it will become a FEMA event and that uh, someday we'll get some money back on our costs. We will have outright cash expenses <coughs> of between a quarter million dollars and a half a million dollars in just gravel. That doesn't say all the labor, all the diesel in the trucks, all the wear and tear on the trucks, just what it's going to cost to put these roads back. Uh, and I think there's enough cumulative damage in Windsor County and in the state that it will become a FEMA event that will get us some money back. Where was the worst damage in Woodstock? Which were the worst? <coughs> well, long, the steeper the road, the worse the damage. So your higher elevations, such as Long Hill, Noble Wood Road, Curtis Hollow, any the higher the worse. Sawyer Road. Sawyer Road was terrible. That got really hurt, uh, and that could be because of a lot of exposed soil. Because um, there are different reasons that roads wash out. One is soft ditches. We did not lose any bridges. 
there was a lot of woody debris in culverts, a lot of ditches eroded. I brought in Pathways Consulting to help us write road damage reports in the language that FEMA likes to see them. They want everything quantified. So while, so we're doing everything we can to make sure we get money back. If they're giving it, we're going to get it. Just a matter of time. We still have not been paid for the July 1st, 2017 event, but we keep getting promises of payment, which is better than we were six months ago. So it's, uh, it's a waiting game, but we are keeping everybody safe. Thank you. Any questions, Joe? Did you hear that okay, Joe? Yeah. I did. Good. Thank you. Okay, um, the next item in our additions and deletions is a resignation from the select board. And Sonia wrote a, a letter to Butch, who was our chair, who's out of town, who um, <laughs> has read the letter. <laughs> um, Sonia's leaving, uh, effective at the end of this meeting. And um, she's leaving, moving from Woodstock. And so she's no longer, will no longer be a resident and must resign. And she states it's been rewarding and enjoyable for her and a pleasure to serve with a great group of committed volunteers and employees and with Butch and Phil. And she's fortunate, she says she feels fortunate to have been part of such an experienced team. We've been fortunate that you've chosen to join us and stick with us as long as you have. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. And of course, we wish you well. Now I need a motion to accept this resignation. I'll make a motion to accept her resignation. You second that, John? I'll second it. Motion made and seconded to accept Sonia's resignation. Because she has... This is a new application they had applied before, but it never came never to fruition. So, last, this so the, the back story to this is last year they applied for this permit and um, then uh, applied for a liquor license but did not follow through um, for some reason. But this year they've decided to get the license for Kelly Way. Um, which is a new, it's going to be a new license. It's not a renewal, it's a brand a renewal, new license. Brand new. Just because it's a new location. Yeah, yeah, yeah new location. Um, I, I would make a motion to uh, accept it. So he's made a motion to approve the liquor license at Callaway Gardens for the Woodstock Resort Corporation. Yes. Is there a second? The I'll second. second yeah. John Dalton second the motion. Motion's been made and seconded to approve Liquor license for Kelly Way Gardens, part of the Woodstock Resort Corporation. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Liquor license is approved for Kelly Way Gardens. Um, our next item on the agenda is oh, this goes on to go on to sewer commissioners. I think so. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, so. That's the end of our new business, and we're going to move into either. sewer commissioners. Um, so I'll. Two go requests ahead. for adjustments. I got two. Two. Yep, there are. Michael Pack and Michael Malik. I concur with. I, I don't have an issue with these. Okay. Um, That's to do with switch. People who once had apartments in their houses now do not. Do not have them. And do not want to pay the apartment rates. The Malik was like a right. duplex right. for a long time. Right. It is now a one family. Um, the um, requests are by Michael Pact and Barbara Berry and Michael Malik to um, reconfigure their sewer allocation to the actual use of the house. The motion to uh, Let's see. The adjustment for 
packed in Barry is $251. And the adjustment for Michael Malik <coughs> will be $154.48. Yes. Go ahead, $154.48. Make a motion. John, will you make a motion to approve those adjustments? Yes. As requested and submitted? I will. Second? I'll second them. Thank you, Jill. Motion's been made and seconded to approve sewer adjustments as requested. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. aye. Um, we also have an application for addition to the sewer in Taftsville. Just add it here. That will be adding an apartment. Adding an apartment to um, the Johnston residence at 104 Happy Valley Road in Taftsville. The um, application is before us and has the fee been submitted? The fee has been submitted. Okay. Um, and they have, I've included, I believe attached to that is your um it has what they're yeah, planning what they're, they're planning, planning to do the um yeah. the zoning request thank you um oh so they, they have approved they have applied for zoning yes um their their permit for zoning is pending the year acceptance of this oh, okay. of oh, okay. the um, sewer proposed increase. I just want to make sure they're coordinated then. So, um, yep. yeah, I would make a motion to approve this. Uh, Sony has made I'll a motion to approve. Jill has seconded. I'll second. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. So, just um, want to chime in and answer your question, and people at home might be interested too. When, and anybody comes for a zoning permit, before they get a certificate of occupancy that says everything is done right, they got to take care of sewage, take care of water, take care of the driveway, take care of the road access. All those itsy bitsy nu nuisance things where they don't get the certificate and they don't get the bank financing. So everything does follow what has to happen for everybody being fair right so he didn't just decide he wanted to build an apartment and then look for water to be hooked up there this is all happening through a process yeah, with the planning time. right yep. okay before before they can submit their um, permit for this apartment they had to get pre-authorization to have the sewer increase the additional got it the increase in sewer use and i guess my question my the reason i care is that um i'm not go going to approve a sewer hookup unless i know they they are going through We're the zoning process, process. Yeah. like i wouldn't want to do it no, that way either. right that's right okay so um the only thing i was going to mention other business is, under other business phil already has and that's the advertising of the vacancies that exist and so that's already been described and explained um, we're at the point of citizens comments I just have a question yes Laura I was told to show up tonight because I uh, it's warned all over the place that I'm looking for a zoning change and it's supposed to be approved tonight, but um, it's not on your agenda. Zoning change where? In Southwood. South 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 South. Where your store is. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh they oh. that was last month, wasn't it? No, it's Can sitting right downstairs down? on the board, right next oh, to the thing God. that warns this oh, meeting. Okay. Well, and I just assumed it was under other public business. Public hearing, right? Pardon me? Yeah, yeah once your public, public hearing, the planning right. commission approves it. Already did that. Although I don't, well, I don't it wasn't brought. We did the in March. Um, no, I, the problem, no, I remember. We might have yeah. said we would hear it the, tonight. The appropriate notice saying that it will be at this meeting tonight. I believe it. The board, I, yeah, the board. I, believe you. I have three that Lynn sent me saying that it's yeah. tonight at this meeting. And yet, yeah. and yet it's not on the agenda. Well, <laughs> it's not. It wouldn't necessarily come forth and 
submitted it, I guess we have no choice but to vote to accept it. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Um, you almost just did a whole three years stint. This is great. I know, I know. <laughs> You've got came in. You've made a difference. I encourage anyone to think about doing it. It's been very rewarding. I really, I, you know, to anybody watching at home, it's easier than it looks to get up here, or to try anyway. And it's uh, it's really um, you learn a lot, and it's it's been a great experience. You've served the people of Woodstock well. I've tried. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next item is a liquor license for the Prince and Pauper restaurant, which has recently changed hands. Their liquor license was granted a new one just recently, but all liquor licenses in the state of Vermont expire on April 30th. So they need a new license to sell alcohol after May, as of May 1st. So. We have the application, I have a motion to approve that, if you are so inclined. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve it. John seconded. Motion made and seconded to um, issue a renewal license to Prince and Popper. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, wastewater treatment facility roof replacement and alterations. Uh, I'll just give you the highlights. I do not have hard bid numbers. We are working on that. We have, Jim, would you say those specs are 100 pages long for that roof project? It's a love. So, so to give you some background, the reason the roof needs to be replaced is because it is poorly insulated and it needs repair so we're taking the opportunity to repair the roof and um, insulate it at the same time and to use a roof that is ready for solar panels if we decide to do that so because this is a big job we chose to go out and get the bid papers written for us and that's what's ready now so we're ready to go out to bid and they said yes there are a lot this is double-sided Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. It's, so that's it's why, I, I that's see why the size of the packet. <laughs> this is why you guys don't each have one because I don't think you'd want to read through it. We can stop by the office and look yeah, at it or yeah, is it can. being emailed to us? No. Good. I'll stop by and look at it. So the, the, thank the, you, Joe. The money will come from the construction fund. Yeah, so, we're so it's not coming out of users' everyday fees. It's coming out of the fund when people pay a sewer connection fee that gets set aside and that becomes a construction fund. And that construction fund is paying for that roof and the upgrade in Tassville mandated by the state. And when we do the upgrade in South Woodstock, that will become a bond because there's no more big boodle of money left. How much is in that fund? Right now, I think 525, and we have about 475,000 expenses to, towards it. Goodness, we have it. Yeah, it's been well managed, and it will get us through the worst of it. Yep. Um, the proposal. This is an all access. That's the name of the organization. The proposal for our email migration from um, Gmail to. Office 365. There's a proposal for the total cost of this is $4,740 for the um, change from Gmail as it is now to Office 365. There are files and um, essential operations that need to be migrated, and this will occur <laughs> on every computer here at Town Hall. And the Town Garage and so the Fire The Town Garage and the e Emergency Services Building. So can you give us some background to this? Why is it necessary when we've just migrated to um, G Suite? Um, 
I can give some background on that. Please I've do. been dealing with this project. So um, what it is is we migrated to Gmail, um, but people have found that they do not like the Gmail situation and would rather go to Office 365, which is Outlook and back to that area, which we were using before. <coughs> um, some of the, most of the upfront cost of this is moving the your email current email usage over to that new area um, as you may remember we had some issues of getting files migrated over mm -hmm. um, in a timely manner before um, this was due to the fact that it was poorly managed when it was transferred over um, they are going to do this 100% correctly um, and set us up they will offer on-site services, so they will be coming in and installing Office 365 on all <coughs> desktop computers from ESB to the highway department, wastewater treatment, and town hall. And we will have the newest and most up-to-date so versions nice. of um, Office 365. So we will always have the most up-to-date Microsoft Office, Excel, and such, which will cut down on those costs in the future. Um, but the reason most likely the most most of the, the most likely reason that we really had to do this is that Gmail was not um, well, we can make it work the, yeah a lot of people were having problems with Gmail <laughs> making it work for the town municipal offices so I have a big question about this and um, I'm not a computer expert but it's, a, it's another cost of $5,000 plus a monthly cost. Is the monthly higher than we currently pay or lower? Um, the monthly cost will be about the same that we pay currently. The other thing is Gmail. Um, two months after we got Gmail, they announced a rise in their cost, which puts us up even more in money. <coughs> um, so it, Gmail will be more expensive than it is currently. Well, it wouldn't necessarily have to be. Right. Pardon me. I, I, I yeah, you know, I, yeah. why does it have to be on the agenda? Oh, no, I mean, no, it, does. it would. It would be on the agenda. You could take it under observations, additions. Let me go get it off. Do you have no, no, I didn't bring it with me. I'm it's sorry. Okay. You said it's on the wall downstairs. downstairs. Yeah, it's on the wall downstairs. We go get it, Mary. And they've sent me. Mary, I'm going. Humpty scrunch copies. Mary, Each with a one. cute little we'll note that says, that. just want to make sure you have this. <laughs> we'll and I had no clue. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think Lynn's new. I think that's what that's about. Well, let's well, look she's at got this. A lot, she's had a lot going on yeah. with um, Michael, Michael was gone. gone yep. Like I said, weeks, I, think, so. you know, I think it's been a difficult month. Oh. But the Planning Commission did vote and to recommend it to all right. people. And this yeah. is from our March 21 minutes says right here. Yes, April 6th, public meeting, April 16th. April 16th, regular meeting of the select board. Meeting of the well, I'm glad you're here. Board. <laughs> How could I, I, I'm sorry. But this was, I got flooded. No, yes. no, it's good. So, no, I got yes, flooded. I saw and, the pictures, and Laura. Just, uh, you know, I saw the pictures of the area yesterday. Yeah. Um, the, a lot the of water, in your water. It's fine front drained, yard, it's backyard, soaking side wet. yard. The back behind, they're washing the dumpster into the into the brook. It's just nasty, and I apologize if oh, I'm no. a little, yeah. well, little short about this. No, no. <laughs> but this was the meeting for anybody to come and complain. So if right. nobody and nobody to complain, <laughs> that's a good sign for you, right? I've talked to everybody. I don't think yeah. anybody's complaining. I don't have any particular plan. No, no. It's yeah. basically it is simply designed to bring the zoning on the property into uh, compliant. compliant well not compliance into this to for the zoning to match the use yeah, yeah. okay yeah, I've had the same use for the last 33 years 30 almost 34 years yeah, yeah. and the zoning hasn't matched it since about two years after when they changed my zoning so this would um, should you ever decide to sell or change anything, You've the your fact your that it's already approved and in place yeah. would give you. We don't have any specific plans authorization, um, but we do we do know that that property really can't support itself without something else being available An to it. Business. And uh, what I'm looking at right now 
is the fact that our community is changing dramatically and I'd really like to see that building preserved and the best way to preserve something in my estimation is not necessarily to ask the public to come up with money but rather to ask people to run successful businesses yeah yeah that's just my feeling about things I think it's silly to you know form nonprofits and so forth when you could just have a you know nice successful little business that's well handled within the community. But people would be afraid to buy the property if, unless they oh, were yeah, properly absolutely. zoned for the way it's being used. Sell it. exactly. No, but, but it's good for you yeah. to do this. Yeah, I mean, it just needs to be done. Right, because you wouldn't be able to convince a prospective buyer, you'll probably get it approved. Like, that doesn't fly. <laughs> it, it's already been approved is the only way to approach it. Um, yeah. The history, very briefly, is that when I bought the property in 1985, or actually the spring of 86, I guess it was, um, it was January of 86, actually, on my birthday, <laughs> when I bought the property, it was zoned Village Hamlet. Village Hamlet allowed me to do what I did. I had a conditional use permit. All that was fine. A couple of years later, there were some other things going on in the community. There were some people who were concerned. Paul Kendall came to me and said, we're going to ask that it be rezoned residential. We'd appreciate it if you would just accept that. I was young. I didn't realize what it meant. And I said, sure, because I respected Mr. Paul Kendall more than anybody in the world. And, uh, and it all was fine until I went to put my husband's office on the property and discovered I had absolutely no right to do that. So Jill, I just <laughs> sent it your phone. If you'd like right. to send it your email. So the end result at any rate, the yeah. end result. No, I'm getting the discrepancy okay. between the use. The end result is we rezoned it to a residential office in order yeah. to put my husband's office in the building. Right. But at the time we discussed that it probably should be changed to the use of the property again. Right. And because it's a weird property sitting in between something that's hugely grandfathered and something that's um, actually a community building. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know, that's the history. Well, I, I like things to be flexible, and I think this is one way we support businesses is allowing. I'll just make a motion to amend your agenda in that section. Both be done first. Uh, I would make a motion to amend the agenda for the addition of. Um, I, would, I wouldn't call it new business, but it's the addition of a public hearing. It's um, already been worn months ago. That it was worn months ago, and we dropped the ball collectively together um, to um, amend the town zoning regulation map to convert uh, a parcel owned by Laura Garden, Gordon, excuse me, located at 5331 South Road from residential office zoning to light commercial, light industrial zone. With the first motion we must make, you've made and must be seconded, is to add this to our agenda for this evening. I have one thing I need to ask you. This is no longer my legal name. Does that matter? What is your legal name? Is it just a my legal, legal name is Laura Hodgkinson Spittle. S P I T T L E. I got married. Okay. Right Twenty-one right. years ago. <laughs> so I will say to amend that motion to have her proper name, Laura Spittle. All right, Hodgkinson. Well, I, I think they have to do that because this is still you, a No, it's legal. I mean, it needs to be. What well, is the this is your tax bill say? That's exactly it. This is what we'll is still on my tax bill. Okay. okay. So we leave, I gave you a piece of paper and fix it up. I can't fix it yet. All right. I'll you talk to you about that. Okay. No worries. Here. Pardon me? Are you and your alias, they're both here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. It's all right. Okay. And and it's okay. Okay. All your identities, all your personalities. Executive for my mother in this particular situation. Oh. So there you go. Motion's been made and seconded by John Doe. Made by Sonia, seconded by John Doe to amend the agenda for an addition to consider a regular uh, an amendment to the zoning map to convert a portion of property from residential office to light commercial, light industrial. All those in favor of the motion to add this to our agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item is added to our agenda. Now we must consider the public hearing in accordance with Vermont. Us, so. so I wonder what I don't really understand why people can't learn to use Gmail instead of Outlook. 
and if it's just a preference. And I would like um, to have uh, somebody like Mike Scurro come in and make sure that we're doing this right and that we're, we're really doing this once and for all. Because it seems a little crazy to migrate from one system to another and then a couple of months later to migrate again. It's not very good use of our money, the townspeople's money. It's not very good use of anyone's time. That spent a lot of time on the first migration. Right, so um, Mike Scurro is not available to us. We did ask him to come in when um, Nate was... Um, we first had issues with Nate, and he was not available to do so. So we contacted um, Godet, Mike Godet, who was recommended to us through the sheriff's Windsor County Sheriff's Department. And um, this was actually something that he referred to us to All Access because it's such a large scale operation, and we needed to get this done the right way, which is why they're involved. Um, they helped us also set up so that we were secure again uh, because we didn't have access to our servers and all of that information as well as I didn't have control of your emails for about three weeks. So, so and, sorry. Oh, I was just so this is a different firm than the firm that's been that has yeah. that did the yeah. This is a new firm, um, and they are setting us up to succeed in the future. This is, you know, they are setting us up so we are 100%. They have gave us more options, more detail on what we are getting instead of would you like one or the other. They told us the pros, the cons, and what it would entail. So it sounds like we're sort of paying $5,000 just because that firm turned out to be not a good firm, the, the firm that brought us over. Not just that Gmail yeah. was bad, yeah. we, but that that, yeah, that firm seems to have not. The decision was made for Gmail and people did not like the decision. We gave it a shot, we gave it more time, and it's just not working for a majority of the people that work in the building. Did they stop supporting you? It sounded like they, they weren't. Um, it's not a, Gmail's not, it's not that they didn't support us, it's that the IT person that we had was involved in something. He was arrested. He was oh. arrested. So we, we decided, okay. It. We had to build a firewall with passwords so nobody could get in and mess with our stuff. Yeah. And now we got to go forward. And if we've got this Gmail thing hanging out there with that company, okay. and everybody hate Gmail, okay. let's get rid of Gmail. Okay. So we're, we're, we sort of have to pay a little bit because yeah. He turned out to be a schmuck. <laughs> that I mean, I mean, it, which does you know See, that costs that people in the world. When people are schmucks, so you, you know. Not on the uh, but but the three fifty is is what is commensurate roughly with what we were paying the the felon or whatever. Well, we're getting more of a value for paying a little bit more. And money. you're getting you're not just getting a single person here. Yeah. You're getting a whole team. There's not just one guy that comes to your place yeah they've got a whole team that's backing you like if you have a what if I have a problem hey I've got a problem here you know it's not like oh I'm out of, out of the office today it's oh I'll get one of our guys on it and the money is available to us in this fiscal year yeah, it will not come out directly out of taxes it's, it's in it's the capital, capital reserve capital. account dedicated to computers and software, both town and village. So we don't have a contract with that guy anymore. No, we don't owe him anything. He's gone. Well, he's gone. Okay. As long as we're not he having to pay two people at the same time. We needed him, we paid him. Okay. Yes. No, it was very, uh, it's too bad. It was very embarrassing when that happened, but we had to protect all of our files, and we did. So now, do a weekend that own these files and this company just comes in to provide service? That is correct. So that's better than before? I'm sorry, Jill? That's better than before? It is better because we have access. I had no access to anything when this happened. I had no passwords. I had no access. I had no way of saying, I don't know. Like, you know, if somebody, Joe Schmo came off the street and said, you know, you need I need a file and I go in and the files not there I had no way of accessing the server I had no way of adding an email deleting an email mm -hmm. I you know our credit card information was on that Gmail 
he had all of that. <coughs> so yeah, we now have 100% control. I have I have control of all passwords at this point. That's good. So and okay. there's more than one person available. So if Beth right. places a call on a Tuesday morning, <laughs> chances are we're going to get somebody here okay. that day they and not have, have to make it. Somebody a else is arrested. Only another. Well, they have. They currently have the passwords <laughs> because they've been working. But I have the override ability okay. to say, hey. We don't want these. They've done something we don't like. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go in and change the password. Okay. Okay. They don't have that capability. So we have a security check on this new firm? Uh, yes. They have. They, <laughs> they come Robbie, highly recommended. They've well. come highly recommended, and um, Robbie, Robbie did look into them a little bit, and they are legitimate, and they are <laughs> they're good. Okay. Well. Okay. I think we need to do it then. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> is, is that a motion, Jill? I'll make a motion to accept this proposal. Yeah, I'll second it. Thank you all. Motion's Thank been you. made and seconded to accept the proposal from all access. Are there, is there any other discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all. I, I like that you tried to protect his dignity, Phil. That's great. <laughs> right now, you the tried, guy, sorry, I didn't know. He <laughs> got no dignity left. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I was trying. Ooh. Yeah, we, we made an effort. You, you turned you too nice. Well, you're um, nicer than I am, I guess. <laughs> okay, um, the next item in our agenda, which we should all be interested in, is the report of the structural engineer summary for. Um, of the town hall inspection that was done and Jill do you want to address this since you were most active in the town hall rejuvenation committee sure so um, as the town hall seems to be a place where every time we do a little piece of work we find something else the matter a problem in the building and so as we started the project the town hall re rejuvenation we start, um, we, we realize that we don't really know the information about what's going on with the town hall and some of the problems. So we hired a structural and statutes to amend the town zoning regulation zoning map to convert a portion of the parcel 320221 owned by Gordon, Laura Gordon located at 5331 South Road from residential office to light commercial, light industrial. Uh, just a, so, a quick point. It, you said 320221. Oh, 330221. Beg your pardon. No, Thank that's you, okay. Laura. I just, no. Laura is present. Are there any questions for Laura? I have a question about um, what the planning office has done, but not for Laura. Okay. I, I, I assume we would have, if there were concerns from anyone, we would have heard them. That is correct. It was approved by the planning well, that's, commission. That's, that's, wait, that's oh, my wait, question. Wait, it was approved uh, by the planning commission. Sorry, that was the, Phil's it answer. It doesn't, it would not move to the select board without approval of the planning commission. They so make my question, my question is, how, did we do notices? As yes. We oh, yes. To yeah. neighbors and all the rest of it. Yeah. Have yes. we done that? Yes. Do we know that? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, the planning Thank commission you. would have done that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was. Oh, it was, believe me. Everybody, everybody got it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding, I got four. I mean, it's in our mi minutes and everything. Like, it was definitely done properly. We just didn't do it properly tonight. But we're here now. Okay. Thank you. So, unless anybody has any other discussion, or in order to, to, to move the discussion along, I would make a motion to accept the zoning change. And I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded to accept the zoning change as previously described for a uh, property owned by Laura Garden on South Road from residential office to light commercial, light industrial. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Hi. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for catching us. So thank you for coming. Thank, thank you, you for coming. coming. It right. takes a village, apparently. For your patience. My husband. My husband. He wants an office. 
<laughs> no, my husband has his office. What, what happened was a couple of days ago, he joined the listserv. Oh, perfect. And he looked at the agenda and he said, you're not on that agenda. And he's like, here, look, here's the notice. You're supposed to be on that agenda. And I looked at him and I said, oh, it must be under other business. So you got to the other business and I'm like, Nope, it's okay. No harm, no foul. <laughs> There's been a lot going on. I'm glad you came. I'm really glad you came in. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you for coming in. Great. Before we move to approving minutes, oh, look at this. I'd like to present <laughs> this to Sonia. I said you don't you don't and give gifts to quitters. Don't do it. You're not a quitter. I will take it back. Have them melted down. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll take it. <laughs> you might need the gravel. Open it up. Read okay. it, Clara. Oh, boy. Oh, I even had to sp tie a special bow on oh, that. Oh no, is it a torture bow? No, I, may, I can get it off. Okay. You, oh, you'll get it off. Oh boy. <laughs> is this a card? No. No, it tells me. It tells me, okay. It's packing material. That's going to get us a new hole in one piece. Yeah, I hope. I put it in the car. Leave it in the car, yeah. Don't move it. Yeah, just don't move it. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, that's great. Presented to Sonia Stover, a grateful town of Woodstock, thanks you for your dedicated service to our community, serving on the select board. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We really raised a bar for your husband. Oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> he got nothing. <laughs> well, thank you. That's very sweet. It really has been a, a pleasure and an honor. Where are you moving to? Um, I'm actually moving to Hanover, so ah. not far. I'll be back. Don't worry. <laughs> thank you, guys. That's very generous of you. Okay, now we have two sets of minutes to approve. Oh, three sets. Three sets. We have March 21. The joint meeting with the trustees on the same night, the select board meeting minutes for that night, and um, minutes from our April 10th meeting. I read them all, but I couldn't find any. Minutes. You d couldn't. <coughs> Jill, have Perfect. you removed the, Have you removed the minutes? Reviewed the, yes. the minutes? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Jill has a question. No, I have a general question about minutes, but not these three. Okay. Um, Do you want to ask it? Sure. Um, I just wanted to know how we um, So, on, uh, let me tell the story. So, on March the 21st, I proposed some amendments to the minutes. They are made, they are reported in the minutes of the March 21st meeting. But the draft minutes were taken down and the actual minutes were then put up for the March 6th meeting and these corrections were not put in those minutes. Is that the way things are done? Um, it seems misleading. I pulled down those minutes directly off the web, Jill, and looked at the draft minutes that from the 21st and I highlighted and marked and all changes that were submitted were made. I even showed them to Phil. They're all in there. On March the 6th. No, she said on the 21st references the changes to the March 6th. Yes, minutes. so it's changed in the in the meeting where we approve the changes, not that the right. draft so is then when changed. I I pulled the so I pulled the approved meeting yeah. minutes off of the website. Like I printed them off of the website, and I highlighted the changes. And there was I they're all in there, Jill. I showed them to Phil the other day. So are you saying? Okay, Jill? well I apologize. I apologize then because I thought I was looking at the March six minutes and saw and didn't see the changes. Okay. So would they be in the March six? Um. Well, the, mean, March the, the March 6th, 6th approved minutes are on the approved website. Approved minutes, right. The approved okay. minutes are on the website. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now, that's my question. Okay, I'll, let, I'll look at them right now, and then I'll, I'll answer my own question. If you would like, Jill, I can um, send you the highlighted no, no, versions I, and such. 
I, I'm looking at the website, and then I will ask my question but these, again. But so. these three meetings seem to be fine. They seem to be fine. Would you concur with that, Jill? Well, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I would, I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Premier, to come in and look at what's going on with the foundation settlement in the town hall, specifically the theater bit. And so now we have a report from that, from the engineer. And they've made many visits and they've asked for lots of work. There's nothing, their conclusion is that there's nothing dangerous right now, so we don't have to close the theatre. But it's an incomplete report because none of the boring tests have been done. And so we will have a full report by the end of May. And until then, we don't know what to do in terms of rejuvenating the town hall. We do know that we have a building that's moving and it needs to be monitored and we will probably need some additional structural work done. Good Would you add Very anything? good, thank you. Uh, Is there any questions? I'm sure one of us could at least take a stab at an answer. I hear no questions, so we'll move on. Thank you, Joe. Um, Oh, the financial report of the select board. Why don't we just postpone that discussion till a little later in the meeting so we can move ahead with the Economic Development Commission. Um, I think I'm, I'm, please. I'm speaking for them. Yes, please, John. We have two grants for you to consider. Um, and I... Could you ask John to come up front, please? Oh, sorry, right. Yeah, Thanks, Joe. I didn't think of that. I finished my sandwich. Um, sorry, Joe. Um, so we have two grants for you to consider. Uh, I, I don't. I uh, don't know how. Do you know anything about these grants? Like, have you received the copies of them We've or not? We received. Um, you received the first one was Park Run. We yeah, we received yeah. Park Run. Okay. We have. Um, an update for the meeting. Okay. So why don't I... I um, Would it I help you to yeah, hang on to that? Yeah, that's fine. I've um, read it all, so... Okay. Um, the... Uh, I guess I'm not sure which... There, I think... Let's do Park Run first, okay. since it's the first one out okay, there. Okay, so Park Run is a $5,000 grant request to establish an event, a recurring event, which is a run that is... Um, managed and monitored by this global organization. There are 300,000 people around the world that are part of this. And they take, these runs take place every week in every location with as few as two or three people and as many as, you know, thousands of people. And the organization provides kind of a standard registration timing. And you basically, if you're a runner, which I'm not in case you can't tell, uh, you know, keeps track of your history of running, and, and it's a very social kind of occasion. Um, the, this is a one-time cost that funds the program in perpetuity, basically. It's basically to buy the equipment. Um, and there's a group of volunteers in Woodstock who would man the race. Uh, it's, really, it's really more of a run than a race. I mean, there are winners, but everyone gets their time and everyone is a winner, so to speak. It's really sort of a social gathering. Um, they've picked Woodstock as the next kind of location. I think there are 27 locations in the U.S. And they've really just picked Woodstock because there are people here who are willing to support it. Um, this grant violates one of our stated uh, criteria, which is that we don't want to fund the entirety of a project. We want there to be other mm -hmm. people funding some of it. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, there's just a couple of people, they're just individuals who are runners who have proposed this. It seems unfair to ask them to pay for their own money. They don't have any infrastructure to raise any money. There's no organization mm -hmm. behind it other than, other than the big global organization um, who doesn't provide funding. And we felt it was a small amount of money and a very good payback for, you know, to establish a weekly event. People actually travel, people who are part of the park run community travel to the places where there are events so that they can run in a park run event and get their time put onto the website and so forth. 
So um, we also thought it was a very good fit <coughs> with the new trail that we hoped, we hoped actually to launch the two at the same time at Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the trail is going to be ready by then. But they've found, I think, an alternative place. Mm -hmm. So we're proposing that. I don't know if Mika wants to speak here. Do you want to add anything? Uh, no, that's a perfect comment. Mm -hmm. Any questions for John? No. Okay. Sonia? Uh, no. No, that's great. Okay. So... Do you vote on these as a group? There's, uh, only, there's only one other one. There's one other. Um, so we're going to hear the next... Go ahead, Jill. Oh, I thought we used them separately. Yeah. Yeah. We can, we, we can do that. We can do that. So the EDC has I, approved this. Yes. Yes, so I'd like to propose a motion to accept this Parkland application for $5,000. There's a second? I, I would second it. Sonia has second. We have a motion and a second to <coughs> approve an allocation of $5,000 from the EDC funds for Park Run. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And you opposed? John? Aye. Aye, okay. Um, motion carries. Park Run, five thousand dollars approved. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, and the second uh, proposal, the second grant re request that we have approved um, unanimously uh, is to fund for this year the flower baskets and lights that go around the green. The small lights. We haven't paid for a part of the big lights. We're now proposing to pay for the small lights. Um, it's a total grant of seven eight thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars out of a total budget of about twelve thousand um, about twelve thousand dollars so this does satisfy the criteria that we're not paying for everything um, the uh, I think everyone um, involved everyone on the ED uh, well the general sentiment of the EDC was that everyone in town wants this. The flower baskets are fantastic, right. the lights are fantastic, the citizens like it, the visitors like it. Um, we, um, the, the, the grant request came to us late, which is why you didn't have it in advance. Uh, sorry, not late, it came to us and we have a normal grant cycle which we didn't adhere to in this case and we haven't adhered to in other cases. More about that a little later in the meeting. Um, but we sort of tried to find a way, you know, how can we be helpful here? So we basically discussed it. There, the discussion um, did touch on a question of whether this should be a recurring grant. Uh, uh, in other words, why don't we just say that the EDC will pay for this all the time so we don't have to go through this every year. Mm -hmm. And we explicitly, the grant request was just for this year. And we are about to have a discussion, again, this is on your agenda in a moment, as to whether or not we want to have multi-year for the past three of our meetings, the March 21st, the April 10th, uh, and the other March 21st. Sorry, we had two, two, minute, two, two meetings on March 21st, a joint meeting and a regular meeting, and then April 10th. Is there a second to that yes. motion? Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes we have before us this evening as submitted. All those in favor, please say aye. Jill may want to wait to vote. No, I'll say aye. aye. Okay, okay, thank you. I have no questions about that. All right. Uh, Any opposed? Motion. Okay, so, no, 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 no. Go ahead, Jill. Do you want to vote before you? Oh, yeah, you did. Okay. So, sorry. nobody opposed. Nobody so, opposed. Motion carries. Okay, and I have no question about looking at the minutes and it's all, all, all done. Thank you. Good. Great, Jill. Um, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So, do you need a motion to adjourn the, adjourn the meeting? I need a motion to review yes. the warrants. Motion's been made and seconded to review the, um, to adjourn the meeting and pending review of the expense warrants. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 So uh, motion carries. So we're going to review the expense warrants now. It will be adjourned shortly after it's 747 at this time. Thank you. Thank Jill. Oh, thank you. So can I, 
I do. Their projects and whether this kind of project would be a fit with that or not. But since we're still operating in the current mode, in the current mode, I think everyone felt that A, this was a one-year request, so it meets that criteria, mm -hmm. and B, this is the kind of project that we've approved before, so we would approve this. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we're enthusiastic about this single grant request, mm -hmm. and we recommended it unanimously. What was the amount again? The the, here, yeah. these are the, okay. This is on our website, but those are the numbers okay. on the front. And by the way, I'm sorry, I called back the, you know, oh, your the colleague. Okay. So I have one question. Yeah. Um, and it relates to the light. Um, I would like to know if the lights can be on timers so that they're not on all of the time and we don't use all that electricity all the time. The merchants do not want them to be on timers. We tried that. You could, there's a merchant right here. Well, well, the, uh, the electricity that's being provided is, is private. Um, and the lights are, uh, are, are really uh, all light emitting diodes. I, I notice, uh, I try to see in my electric bill at my business, and I can't even notice the, the expense. Um, so I think it just beautifies the whole village uh, in the darkest time of the year, and the expense is so minimal, and because, they're, uh, because of the nature of the lights that we're using, that I don't think timers are a good idea, and they would, they would never be done uh, at the exact same time anyway, it would be willy-nilly. Um, so I think it's best. It's not, really a, it, it's not really a cost issue, but we are living in a world where we need to reduce our usage of electricity. We have many initiatives to save electricity in buildings. We turn our lights off early. It seems incongruous to keep these lights on 24 hours a day. Well, it is a cost issue, though. Uh, you're talking about the use of electricity, and uh, if it costs very, very little, and there's uh... no, just it's not the cost; it's the message. My concern about the timers, if I may, is whenever you have a little jolt in power. Although you may not have to go around your house and reset every clock and everything that flashes timers will go off kilter and they would have to be reset but most of the people who would have a timer that would shut off at say 10 30 or 11 p.m won't even know because they're not even in the stores at that hour most of those businesses are closed and the next thing that we would hear about is that the lights weren't on so I, I would like to take into consideration Jeffrey's opinion on that, and um, I think that until we can, like last November, we were without power in some places for three or four days, and then the lights were already there. That happened after Thanksgiving. Timers at that point would have taken a week or two. We would have been right through Wassel before everything got reorganized again, in my opinion. I know, because everything went off in my house and I was two weeks trying to put it back together. And okay. have so, so what I would like, I would like us to recognize something, to do something different than doing this in an old fashioned way. Maybe we could use solar energy, maybe we could use, are we already using LED light? I think I, we, are, right? we are using energy efficient no, no, no. lights. Um, Beth has seen to that now, I know more than a couple years, the most energy efficient lights that are but possible. They are not LED. They are not the LED cost. because of the cost and of the initial purchase. And, and that we often don't have the lights the next year. And Beth, All right, I, you, excuse, excuse, excuse me. I don't want to turn this into a discussion about $8,000, but I would like the people responsible, if the town is paying, to come up with some proposal for this. Well, um, if it becomes an annual cost. It's the perception of trying to be an energy efficient town which we're trying to do in all of our um, municipal buildings. Okay. It, um, may I just can say that I, yes. it is, I mean, we did poll individual businesses 
There is one business in town that un unplugs theirs every night and plugs theirs back in. But the majority of the businesses wanted the lights to stay on throughout the night. And okay, but that, 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 you're talking about the businesses. Now you're asking the town to use tax money to pay for the lights. I think the town probably has a say in how the lights are go on, don't they? So I think we can just say that um, if this is considered in the future, to, you know, this is a one-time grant request. I'm about to make a motion to accept it, but should it be considered as an ongoing annual grant request, we will take this into consideration. I think in the next item that you said we're going to discuss shortly, um, this can be addressed. The lights are not going to come until November. The main focus for the immediate decision is to fund the flower baskets, which has been rumored to have been nearly canceled and on hold since midwinter. So for that reason, in order to get the flower baskets moving forward, um, I recommend we take action on this tonight and hopefully approve it. And then maybe before November we can um, address more on the lights, but definitely in the um, planning and the discussion about their policies in May, which John will soon announce that date and time, we can maybe talk about it then. Okay, so I'd like to propose a motion to accept a grant for $8,300 with a proviso that the life issue is considered. 320, it's 325, 325, right? 325, Jill. And I would second that motion. Mo okay. Motion's been made and seconded to approve a grant for flower baskets and Christmas lights for a total of $8,325 with the contingency that we will address the light issue between now and November. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jill, for your patience and tolerance. Uh, there's one other, uh, so I don't know how much of the rest of the report, uh, other than the policy discussion, you need an input on. I'll assume none. I mean, no, you, we've read it. It's no, a good. FYI, yeah. Yeah, I don't FYI. have any questions on what I read. Um, then can I address the other agenda yes, item, please. which is a policy it's discussion? The next item. Okay. Yes. Um, I think we um, jump. Uh, we jump the gun. We would like to have this agenda item on your agenda, but let, but we're not ready to fully talk about it. So let me just explain what we're doing <coughs> for the record, and then we will come back to you. I'm guessing in two meetings or three, uh, with with this full discussion. Um, I think we have now have. Um, about three years of experience in uh, proposing grants. I think this is the 36th and the 37th grant that we've put forward to be approved and that have been approved. Um, we spent about order of magnitude about $600,000 or $625,000. We've raised about a million, or we will by the end of this year, fiscal year, have raised about a million dollars, so we have a healthy balance. And um, I think we've learned, we, we established criteria when the options tax was voted on and the EDC and the select board then over the next year established some specific criteria. Um, we've been following those criteria to some extent. We've been making some exceptions occasionally including one tonight, all of which the, the select board has approved. I think that sort of led us to a point today where we say let's look back and see what we've learned. Uh, let's consider what's the best way to have the maximum economic impact and in particular some ideas, some three, three basic principles have been put forward, not agreed to, but put forward, <laughs> uh, that might guide us in, in a slightly different direction in the future. One is to focus on things that have the most direct connection to economic development. So creating jobs or having people move here or a store opening or building a building would be more direct, say, than lights and flowers, which which would beautify the town and draw people here, which would indirectly bring economic development, which might then be more economically impactful than some other, you know, uh, grant that we could make and probably have. So more, the most direct connection, investments in larger projects, 
and that almost certainly means investments over multiple years. Economic development doesn't happen in one year. And so, for example, if we were to buy a building, people were very worried about the Beltonese building. What if we needed to buy it? Right? Well, that you don't, you don't, we don't have all the money in one year, but we could certainly pay for it over 30 years. Um, most, uh, I'm not suggesting that uh, the building's not for sale, it's just as an example of something that people were very worried about and which has a real impact on economic development. So the most direct connection to economic development, larger, likely to be multi-year projects, and being more proactive, the EDC, rather than to the extent that we're driven by the requests that we receive, we'll continue to do that, but let's also try to reach out to existing organizations and say, how can we help? Maybe it's to the select board, maybe it's to the Woodstock Inn, maybe it's to uh, philanthropy and foundation, maybe it's to citizen groups, maybe it's to other not-for-profits, maybe it's to landlords, maybe it's to tenants, to the chamber, obviously we continue to partner with the chamber. So how can we help to do what you're already doing? Those aren't the only ideas we'll consider, and so we're going to have a meeting on May 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. Like all EDC meetings, it's a public meeting. And the purpose of that will be to put all these questions on the table and to try to come up with a consensus as to what our new policies and criteria should be, at which point, obviously, we would then come back to the select board as we did in December, I think, of 2016, when we set our current criteria. We come in, so now would be roughly three years later. It seems like a good time. So we would come back to you then. Um, and that would, you know, again, might, might have, we might have answered the grants that we gave today differently, or we might answer them exactly the same. We might have said, let's do the lighting forever because it's obvious, or not. Right. But we're limited today by the criteria that say we can't do that. So, so that's a Monday evening. Monday, uh, Monday evening, May 13th, that's 6 from to 6 to 8, 8 here. Yeah. And we'll advertise and we'll put, you know, put that in the agenda. So. Right. That, um, that's great. I mean, for all the input as well. Who, uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes carping about the EDC. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. people need to show up and start saying it out loud and be part of the conversation. You Absolutely. Know? I mean, don't don't just sit at home and but you know, bitch right. about it. You know, if, if, there may be town consensus, but who knows if it's all right. behind closed doors. Right. I mean, it, you know, and participate. <laughs> I'm not telling you. You guys you. reserve the room just a question. No, we have not yet. So. Um cuz the Sustainable and Woodstock Energy Committee has the second Monday of okay. the month. So, so, we'll figure it out. so we'll figure out. We'll figure um, out. So maybe talk with them. That's a, that's, that's a small meeting. They could go in the second room. Yeah. Small team. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll figure yeah. out a place we'll to figure out. Sure, yeah. sure yeah. talk about it. Probably be able to move something half an hour. Away. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Let me just Work ask because this always. is an this is an important issue, and we didn't vote on what I just said. It's just my sense of it. So, Mika, do you want to add anything? No, I think that, that sums it up. That's exactly what we're yeah. doing. It's a, just a review of our policies and our procedure and, you know, the direction that we're moving in. Thank and we're, we're really trying to keep it really high level. Um, mm -hmm. And just right. we're not considering any grants at that, no. at that meeting. Exactly. Right. Nothing <laughs> specific. Yes. People exactly. to come and public input is right. welcome. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And that is that all you have for tonight? Yes, unless there are okay. any questions. Yes, I have no questions. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for the um, the extra meeting to decide oh, sure. on the flowers ahead of time. Yeah, no, That's no important. Yeah. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Yes, Jeffrey. Um, I have to leave, but I just want to put on record that uh, besides your board, we are in this whole town really so thankful to Sonia. Oh, thank you. For, for the work you've done, seriously, and, uh, and, and, and your expertise. It wasn't, you didn't just sit there with your opinion, you, you actually did uh, work that thank we you. really noticed. So I thank appreciate you very that. Much. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Okay, moving on, the Investment Advisory Committee update. I guess this is me if Jeff, Jeff is left. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, so the Investment Advisory Committee gives a quarterly report to the Select Board um, to advise on how the endowment fund that Rockefeller left us is performing in the marketplace. So you have a page uh, with some highlights and uh, two graphs showing how the equities and the bonds are performing. Mm -hmm. 
and um, we put some of the money in the Vermont Community Loan Fund, and we put the rest in equities and bonds with Vanguard, 60% equities and 40% bonds. Um, we took out 69500 in February for the annual tax-based contribution, which is what the fund was set up for. And now we can report that the equities have been outperforming the, um, the market for two of the past three months, and the bonds have been outperforming the, um, the Bloomberg Index, which we follow for the bonds, for three of the past three months. So every quarter we ask ourselves the question, are the funds in, in good places that are giving us returns? And the answer is yes. Great. Excellent. Thank you. That's perfect. Committee is working well. Okay, are there any questions for Jill? No. All right, moving on to old business. Um, approval of the revised Mudget Janet and Crow, Crow Wisner um, contract for the audit See. that was to change an employee's name um, who will work closely with the auditors. That was and my question. What changed? And just um, the person. Okay. Yeah, just yeah, they Anna and Zoe. Anna and Anna will be gone okay. when this this little part is done. So uh, you need a motion to accept this new contract yes. with the, the corrected okay. employee. So I would make that motion. So uh, Sonia's, um, made, uh, Sonia's made a motion. Jill seconded to approve the revised contract. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. <coughs> that authorizes Phil to sign yeah. the <coughs> contract as presented this evening. Um, moving on, we have truck specifications and um, proposals for bid for two, well, they're all highway department trucks and a motor grader, two uh, F450 pickup trucks, a 4x4 dump truck, and a motor grader. So what I'm asking is permission to go out to bid to replace, at this time, the, the two smaller trucks, the one Ken drives, the one is used in the village, and the dump truck that plows steep grades and has a little grader mounted midships. The motor grader bid spec will be go out in the future. I've got a note in that memo about street sweeper. We're just gonna Fire. we got a grant to buy a new street sweeper. It's not being funded by the federal government because too many of its parts are made overseas. So we'll just it's kind of on hold. You're, you're waiting for a new president? I am. <laughs> um, I have a few questions. Can we yes. discuss or do you yeah. want a motion on the No, no, we've got, Please. That's, I guess the procedure is to have a motion, yeah. Um, so you're talking about getting um, the Ken's truck and the George's truck. And the Ken's, the, the, Alex's, so all three. which is an older to truck. To go out to bid for, yes. To go out to bid for all three. I propose to replace all those three vehicles so this year. How much, so I was a little confused about the math because it looked okay, like... So let's start. Do so everybody get their memo out? <laughs> it goes with... Got it right here. Okay. So shall we start with the truck number one called Alex? Alex's truck. So if it's eighty thousand dollars and if it's sixteen thousand dollars for five years, that that is eighty thousand dollars. So I guess my question was I don't what, know. what comes out of capital reserve? Like how does that work? So if we need a little boost for the first payment. Okay. Because we have sixteen thousand in the budget. Yeah. So if we need a little boost to help the down payment, that okay. would come out of capital. So that's you're not talking about a lot of money. You're talking about like a couple four thousand. Four or five, okay. two. It depends on how bids go. Okay. So with Ford, the town gets a fleet Ford fleet discount because right. we drive so many Ford vehicles. Okay. And the Ford fleet discount 
depends on how many vehicles Ford Motor Company is selling to the general public. Oh, so it's ran it, you as, control that. As yeah. they're selling lots of cars to the public, our discounts go down. Oh, God. They got to move a lot of inventory. Our discounts, discounts go up. Okay. So uh, I have a I have a, uh, a principal um, concern about this. We buy new trucks and we budget money for new trucks. We do not budget money in the capital reserve for trucks. So I don't think money should be taken out of the capital reserve unless it's going to be put back in. The, the boards used to fund pretty much paying cash. Right. And now we got away from that, and that money is left over. Yes, but we have many calls on that money. Um, we have a town hall that's going to need more work. So the, the principle of what I'm saying is, I'm not sure that the town should be spending any more money on trucks than we have budgeted in our regular budget for trucks. And that may be the just case. Because they cost, just because they cost a little bit more doesn't mean you go to the capital reserve for money. It means that you say, do we need this truck? Do we need a truck this big? Can we find out money elsewhere in the highway budget? That's what a budget is. I think that that money was initially budgeted for trucks and has not been needed to use okay. yet. And it's still there for well, us. Well, let's go, if it's all right, if it please the board, going out to bid does not obligate the town to buy anything. Okay. Let's go out so to why bid. Don't we do, why don't we do the bid stage and then we work out where the money comes from? That sounds good. Great. So you do need a motion to go out to bid? I, I, would, I want everybody to know what I'm doing. Yep. If you, you don't have to bid. You also <coughs> don't have to have a motion to buy. Oh, okay. If you're comfortable with this spec, okay. just turn me loose and I'll take well, care. Well, I don't know. I, I, only John would know about the specs. That's where I really go downhill. <laughs> and I know that he's <laughs> Sorry. married. Okay. So, so does he like the specs? Does he, is this what we should be bidding for? John yeah. and Ken went over the specs. So when, you, when the time comes in a month or two, you may say we cannot afford a diesel engine. Yeah. We'll put another gasoline engine in okay. and the money will work. Okay. There's all kinds of possibilities once you get your bid back. Okay. Okay. This is another question on truck two. Yes. Um, this is a truck that is, uh, even by fall 2019, is only four years old. So why are we trading it? I believe this truck has it's served about four winters. Pardon me? Four winters. Yes, it's been through four right. and our, already. And our stand, isn't, isn't our standard five, six, or seven? It's longer than four, isn't it? Well, this truck is also, um, if you be, read the memo, it's a larger truck with a truck proposed with a diesel end, engine, which <laughs> will um, allow the driver to plow and salt through the night without stopping for fuel take fewer trips to the salt pile because it will hold more salt. Additionally, the sander is designed with modern technology to spread salt in front of the rear wheels, which is safer than we currently do, which is dumping I behind. I, I, and I understand all of that, but if you take that to the nth degree, something new it's usually better than something two years old in these days of technical advancements. I still have the question of why are we replacing it? Does it not do its job? Can it not do its job for another year or two years to conform with our policy on trucks? I think part of this is a safety issue for the driver. It was part of the capital reserve plan that was approved by the select board and built into the budget. Again, Bids come back, you know, the board doesn't want to buy it, the board doesn't have to buy it just because you got a bid. But, does it sound sorry, but nobody's answering my question. Okay. Why are we not sticking to our policy of replacing on a standard time? What, why are we doing something different with this truck? Does it still have a warranty? It's, no, it's been through the number of winters. It's, the truck came to us earlier in the year. A lot of times they don't come to us till 
January, but this has been through the number of winters that a typical other purchased truck would be. Again, we only have to get the bids, Jill. We right. do not have to approve the purchase if that's how it comes okay. down when they're so all in. I would, I would like to request a written document that says what our standard policy is of replacing trucks, how frequently we do them, and how many trucks we own, and because I, I don't understand this, and every time we, we have a discussion about trucks, we have to ask very fundamental questions, which I'm sure could be written down. Okay. But I would make a motion to um, accept the specifications to put it out, to, to put these out to bid. So that we can and I will, I'll, I'll second it because I believe that we need information to have these discussions on. A motion has been made and seconded to authorize Phil to go out to bid for the um, three trucks and motor grader as... The grader's not ready yet. Oh, not, oh the grader isn't ready yet, sorry. The three trucks as submitted this evening. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Phil, you're authorized to go out Thank and collect you. bids, Sorry. and we'll come up with that other information Good. for Jill before our next meeting, or get it to Thank you in the meantime if we can. Do our best. Um, oh, we're at our appointments for the EC Fiber Board. So, um, I've, okay. been, I've been working on this for a while. Lots of uh, conversations among the, the people who had expressed interest. And um, Dave Brown has um, expressed his wish to be the, all, the, uh, the, the delegate. And Bob Merrill has said he will support him as the alternate. Dan Orcutt has withdrawn his name. So I think that leaves us with the two. Um, Will Dan continue to serve as an alternate? No, he will not. He will not. He will not. Okay. So we so need to appoint the, the, Bob is the alternate right now, and he's serving because we don't have a, Bob no. a first okay. mm -hmm. place person. So may I say one thing before we, oh, do you, no, that's no, it, and that's and it. That's, that's sort of where I, I'm I seeing if we it, should make a motion at this point. I could make, I would make a Sorry. Did you say that um, Bob Merrill wanted to be the, the alternate, alternate. Okay. which he is now? Okay. Um, so he would continue to serve. If we approve the arrangement, he would prefer to serve as the alternate. He would prefer to serve as an alternate. Yes. And Dan Orkett is no longer interested at he is, all. He is not interested. Okay, so would you like to propose a motion? I would propose a motion to appoint Dave Brown as the EC Fiber delegate. Um, you need to, because there are up at the end of April, yeah. Um, you need Sorry. to make a motion for both members because okay. they're both oh, up. Sure, and and then uh, so I would make a motion to assign uh, to appoint Dave Brown as the C Fiber delegate and Bob Merrill as the alternate delegate. Um, I'll second that. And options. Go ahead, Jill. No, 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 it's okay. I'll second that motion. I have a couple questions to ask. Um, my concern is that Dave Brown has served in the past as an alternate and as our delegate and has stepped away from EC Fiber from time to time for a variety of reasons. And if he were to be appointed tonight, and you've said that Bob Merrill wants to remain the alternate, does he realize that if Dave Brown were to step down again, he, we would look to him to come on to. That would be totally fine with him. In fact, tonight he is serving as our delegate. They're having a meeting that was thrice postponed. It's uh, happening now, I guess. And um, that is absolutely fine with him. He um, would? He would. I think he would really just prefer to be the alternate, but is happy to step up. If step we, up and serve <coughs> as our delegate yeah. until another delegate was appointed. Yes. yes. I, I, I wonder. Dave did an awful lot of footwork in the first part of this business. Oh, yes, he did. 
has. Yes, uh, he did. I, and his family has been I, I hate historically to involved with utilities. Yeah, I hate to see him get thrown out in the cold because he really did a hell of a lot of work. That's right, he did. When we first started this business. So, so motion's been made and seconded to appoint Dave Brown as delegate. And Bob Merrill will continue <coughs> as our alternate delegate. Okay. I'm going to ask for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 You said? Yeah. Jill said aye? Okay. I said aye. All right. So David Brown will be our delegate. Bob Merrill will remain our alternate delegate. All right. And... Um, that takes care of us by the before the end of April, which is the requirement. So we've appointed Dave Brown as delegate, and um, Bob Merrill will be our alternate. Thank you. Um, now, Economic Development Commission board <coughs> appointment. This needs to be made before June, but if we can. I want to table it again, which is mean because, of course, I won't be here. But I, I would like the EDC <laughs> to talk a little bit about what, what they're, what they're doing and okay. how many of them there need to be. Okay. I'd like them to talk about that first. So okay. if we could just keep, keep kicking this down the road. That'd All be right. Nice. Um, Sonia's made a motion to table this appointment until a future meeting. I think that's a good idea. John, don't well, uh, can I, the Yes, Joe. Can I just uh, can I just ask you a question, um, Beth? I'm not sure the information is correct that Barry doesn't need to be appointed till June. Is his term up or not? His term was up, and he said he would continue until June. His email was very confusing about why he would continue until June, but I thought I don't know why. Um, well, that's, that's okay. I mean, that's okay with me. I mean, I'm wondering if it has to do with this discussion about their policies and things that are coming up in May. Yeah, maybe. No, well, this was prior to that. When I had sent the email out asking about if they wanted to be reappointed to their positions, he responded by saying he would be, like to be reappointed until June. Oh. So it's his time. So the thing is, if we, yeah, if we don't appoint him tonight, then he's not on the board. Um, oh, I see. The the EDC vice, uh, the EDC chairs um, would like him to be reappointed, and we haven't got any policies on boards yet because they haven't been agreed. But one of the inputs that we had from many people was that in this town we rely on a lot of volunteers, and if people want to be reappointed, unless there is something specific that they have um, that they haven't been attending meetings or anything, then we should. Generally, they, they would like us to generally reappoint them. So, uh, I would, then I would make a motion to appoint him until June or until the policies are reviewed and adopted. Okay. That may, that may make his appointment, you know, questionable again or not. Yes. Jill second the motion. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to appoint Barry Millstone to the Economic Development Commission for until June or until policies are adopted that would indicate other appointments need to be made or things need to be changed. Uh, All those in favor, please say yeah. aye. Oh, wait, aye. discussion. Ray wanted to I'm sorry, Ray. Is, is he a resident of the state of Vermont? He is not. He, that, that is, uh, go ahead, Jill, please. We don't have a policy on whether people are residents or not. And actually, in the proposals, Ray, one of the things you did suggest to me was that um, members of a, at least one or two members of the EDC should not necessarily be residents. So that was up for discussion, oh, but we don't have a policy. Jill is of the town, not the state. Okay, but, but, it's, but it's one of the policies that may be reviewed and considered, okay. and then may, maybe therefore he wouldn't be eligible after June anyway. Are there any other? So the, yes, Jill. Of the state. So it's so like I, a I resident of you know. <clears throat> Did Ray get his answer? Are you, is your answer good, Ray? For now. He's, well, satisfied, at, For now. he's satisfied at this point. No, so, so he was saying his suggestion was um, not that just that they, they not be residents of Woodstock, but that they be 
I think the assumption is they're residents of the state of Vermont, but they could be a resident of a town like Pomfret or Barnard, which oh, surrounding okay. towns that could right. provide okay. input on right. area economic development. But yeah. right, okay. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor of appointing Barry Millstone until June 2019, aye. please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, moving on to new business. Um, have a warning here to consider for a special town meeting to be held at our regular May meeting, which is um, May 21st is to cover a couple of um, tax requ uh, tax exemption requests for nonprofit organizations specifically um, the rec center mm -hmm. and is there another or is it the three is all it's the rec center the um, Merton uh, Merton, uh, Merton, Merton no, they were already, town was already done for oh, Merton's house. Right. So it's the rec center, the Simmons. Oh, that's right. Simmons building. Simmons rec center. Okay. I, think that, I think that's it. Or it's just those two, I believe. Okay. Sorry. Um, I did not include it. So, Pardon me? Um, so this was, uh, this was because they didn't have to submit it? The language that the rec center chose missed a key sentence of oh. asking for money okay. to oh. pay the taxes to the state. Okay. So, okay. So and the Simmons House it. missed it all together. And the select board said at town meeting, we'll, we'll take care of it for you. Okay. And that's what this is. Because yeah. you, you, you do require, and in the five-year renewal, we'll require them to repetition, but you don't have to. But and the rec center was approved by the voters as, as it was written. So it was it's, written, it's not, so, you it's know, it's not crazy do that we'll approve it. doesn't do the job. Right, right. It was one so sentence like. We yep. need to sign that. There are two. Um, we need a motion. Oh, okay. So I, I would make a motion um, to, to um, sign the warning for yeah, special town meeting. Yeah, to sign the warning and, and schedule the special town meeting for May 21st, 2019. At 6 p.m. here, here at the town hall. Sorry, and the reason I second, passed it down is I'm John sorry. John seconded it, the motion no, to approve fine. to sign the warning. I'm sorry, it's on your packets. A motion's been made and seconded to sign a warning for a special town meeting on May 21st, 2019, here at town hall at 6 p.m. the night of our regular select board meeting, which will follow. Um, this is specifically to address tax exemption for nonprofit groups. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. We'll sign the warning for the annual town meeting, for the special town meeting on May 21st. Can I ask a question that's not, not quite related to that, but at the, at the town meeting, we were asked, what do these tax exemptions cost the town? Is that a major project, or is that something that we can gather information on? Oh. I'll have that information for you after a meeting. Okay. It's, um, so, will you do it for all, all the tax exemptions for the village and town? I'll do your town. <coughs> um, I got to dig up. Okay. It seems, I'm not sure how it's organized, but I'll at least get you the numbers okay. for the town. Please don't make it a major project, though. I think I, would, I wouldn't ask if it was going to be a, a long, drawn-out thing. No, I mean, I'm in. It's no problem. I'm just not promising the village. I promise you the thing. The next item on the agenda is appointments to positions that were elected positions that were not filled on town meeting day, although some individuals had um, write-in votes for these offices, no one had enough write-in votes for um, to be elected. So we have um, elected auditors, and there are two openings. 
these appointments would be made until town meeting when they would run for an office again. This would be the town meeting that will be held in March 2020. And um, there's two auditors. So how does this work? I mean, do we know whether these people are willing to do the job? Tom Deborah Boyce, I know, is willing. To, I spoke with Tom. Okay. I mean, because I, I, I can appoint people, but if we call them and say, That's you've correct. been appointed, and they say, heck no. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um, who is our elected auditor now? Because we have three elected auditors. It's There's one Currently, in it's Nico Selden. Selden okay. Um, and Tom Deborah Boyce uh -huh. are the two auditors. So um, but and one is in place now, and that's Nico. No, he expired. No. His he term just, expired. He, he was the three year. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, all right. And then the trustee of public funds was an open position, and the cemetery commission was Fred Barr, who I believe said he would do he it. He said again. he, he would, would run again. Okay. So. So how many? How many people is a sufficient number? How many for running? There are three. Oh, you thirty. You have to have at least thirty votes. And the most on here for auditor was two. So we have um, Tom Dumpoys has served for. I mean, I don't know these other people, so and I know Tom. I well, mean, we know we know John Warner. Yes, you do. And I know Stuart. But so the question is, how many auditors do we need? Three, really? That's Are we required law. to have three? That's law. That's it's a law. the law. Okay. Two in the village, so what three in the town. And we're not involved with the village, but that's what our auditor count okay. is. So why don't we advertise these positions? Because they are... That's your normal customary procedure for the select board to stick in that in the paper and stick all your vacancies and people interested can apply. And you interview them and you make a decision. So it's just, the, the reason this is here is for you guys to up make that motion to go forward with that. Okay, and rather rather than pick from this list. Right. Okay, okay. But that was just informing you of who was, who right. people voted for. Got it. But Jill, you're right, that's the select board's always been their go-to move, is to put it in the paper and let the whole world know it's a vacancy, and the whole world know if you're interested, this is the time to say, I'm interested. Okay, and then I have a question about the trustees of public funds. Ha um, do we are we legally required to have three? Because we've been operating with two. My belief is that the law is three-year terms staggered, so that every year you elect one person to a three-year term, if you have interest in the community and serving. So you're not violating a law if you don't have a filled position, but you obligated to try and elect that person at annual town meeting. That's interesting. I mean, just because it would be nice to have fewer elected positions, because people are clearly not stepping up. So it would be nice to just have fewer, I mean, but if the state tells us we must, then. The law said that's... What I've told you is the law allows. <coughs> right. So it's okay if it's not filled. <coughs> it would just be nice to not even You're, have to ask for three. Yeah, you know? No one's dying and no one's going to go to jail. Right. Okay. Right. So, I mean, I would say as, as, as a trustee of public funds, two people are quite adequate to do the job. There's not a lot to do. So we'll see who comes forward if we advertise. Yeah. So do you want a okay. motion to place an advertisement to advertise these vacancies? Just authorize. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So not a motion, but yes, to authorize. Okay. So Phil's going to place an ad in the paper to advertise these positions. Um, I know that Fred Barr is willing to say no, he I mean, didn't even, actually he said he yeah. wasn't aware <laughs> that his term was I'm, up. Oh, okay. And there's two, there's actually two things has to happen. One, a statement of the vacancy, which includes Sonia's select board position, these jobs, the resignation of a lister that you're going to get to later. So all these vacancies 
has to be notified. Mm -hmm. Then a different ad looking for candidates. Right, okay. Great, okay. Then we shall move forward with um, posting these vacancies and advertising for interested parties to contact the town manager. Good. Okay, and can I make a request that we put that on this first, please? Sure, you betcha. I thought I'd been doing better, you're Jill. Doing, you're doing great. <laughs> you have? Great. It's fine. great. Absolutely. You're great. Absolutely. Fine. It's all over my calendar. Listen, sir. Listen, sir. <laughs> you definitely have that. <laughs> okay. Um, our next item on the agenda is the town hall boiler room. Yes. Yeah, so Bill has an update for us. Uh, yeah, we have. A wet boiler room, a lot of uh, water runs down the concrete wall. There are two electrical panels that need to be converted to one. We don't, we got more space than we need, so we'll put all our uh, breakers in one panel. It needs to be brought away from the wall to keep it dry. And I'm so, I wish we didn't need it, but it's 35 years of wet environment. I was going to ask you, it's from the 85, yes. 86 renovation. Yes. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> it's time. I, it's time. So we will build it away from the wall. Great. And get it going soon. And yes, we will end up doing the job to slope the driveway away from the building. Yes, that will get so, so this was nothing to do with the new boilers, was it? No. The... Okay. Everything's just breaking at once. The problem was noticed when one of the new boilers was not firing and they came to, to do a study and they said, well, we have a little trouble with electricity out of that panel. If you come down and look, we'll show you where it's all this white corrosion is affecting the transfer of electricity. So, so it's not because of them. But because one boiler was out, we happened to find this problem. So looking at these two bids, yes. is, is Viking the local? Viking is Tashville. Viking needs to give me an additional cost to get that away from the wall. Okay. He was going to mount it on the wall. That's not acceptable. And what's up price includes? People getting away from the wall. And where the are they? Oh, Windsor, Heartland. They do a lot of work for the sewer plant. They were low bid on installing the lights around the park. They come when I call them for small jobs. Well, now I'm a little bit torn because I, I would like to always give it to the local person, but if, if it wasn't obvious... He's got to come down and give me a price to get it away from the wall. Right. And then that will become a new comparison. Okay, okay. So but can we just... Just give me the low bid authorization. Okay, yeah. When it's properly bid. Okay. Uh, so I make a motion to accept the low bid. To, yeah. to do the to find the low bid, the not the Yeah, yeah. Okay. To, uh, for the electrical panels in the boiler room. Yeah. And we'll get that going soon. Did you hear the motion, Jim? Yeah. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to authorize Phil to accept the low bid for work to be done in the electrical panels for the boiler and the boiler room at Town Hall. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is um, a resignation of a lister. Jennifer Maxim has um, submitted a letter of resignation. And I make a motion we accept Jennifer Maxim's uh, with uh, with regret, yeah. also Sonia Stolpers. Okay. I, I second the uh, acceptance <laughs> of the resignation for Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer's last day of work is going to be Tuesday, um, April 23rd. Okay. Okay, so this will be among the positions listed, or like the vacancies announced <coughs> and the positions listed. Um, is, that's right, Phil. 
So we don't have to wait until after she's departed. We can just go ahead and advertise yes. that now because she's yeah. given notice she gave, on she a specific date. When is she getting done? Yes. April 23rd. April 23rd. Sonia's leaving us it wasn't tonight. In the, uh, no, it's not. It's in so I just, I just want to make a plug because that is an, a great job in town. It's part time. It's what almost $25 an hour. Or it's $25 an hour. I don't know what the qualifications are, but. Even though it's an elected position, you have to be a resident. You have to you have be to a be voter. Be, on the, you, you have, have to be, be a voter. voter. Do you yes. what? Do, what do you need to know about real estate? Or are people trained? Well, there's, there's training. training. There's training. And so I just, I mean, that is a great job. It is. The hours are eight to twelve, five right. days a week. Right. Pretty good. Yeah. Twenty-five bucks an hour. So, anyway, it's out there. Now. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll move on from that. John. Yeah. Truck permits. Truck permits. There's a whole handful of them. I know. <laughs> I reviewed these truck permits at least twice, half of them at a third time, because I didn't want to miss any of them. And they all seem to be in order. So I make a motion we uh, accept the uh, over with truck, uh, truck permits as presented. I would second that motion. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to approve several overweight truck permits, which John Doughton has reviewed more than once. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Truck permits are approved as submitted. We have a new liquor license for Kellyway Gardens, um, which is part of the Woodstock Resort Corporation. Off Route 106 for their special events. This is a an application for um, a third class license and outdoor consumption permits, which follow, which coincide with their, their events. Some will be in and some will be out, and this is um, 